but we know what you assert as a globe head is the cause. You say Earth turns underneath the pendulum, giving you two reference yeah. frames. Well, that would shorten flight times. If Earth turns underneath the pendulum at 15 degrees an hour, because it's in a separate, not attached reference frame, then anything that's not attached is in that reference frame. Anything that leaves the spinning reference frame. Like if you're on a roundabout and you throw a ball off it, well, it's not attached to the roundabout anymore. Well, likewise, anything not attached should spin or seem to spin away from you at 15 degrees an hour as you turn underneath it. That's how you have Coriolis effect. That's what Coriolis effect is. You spinning underneath stuff. So if Earth's got Coriolis effect, we're spinning underneath stuff. And we're not spinning underneath stuff. It would shorten flight times. I see. So we do know the pendulum processes, but it couldn't be rotation because if it was rotation, then flight times would be shorter. Precisely. It's been a while since we heard the pendulum I was argument, say, that's actually. What he's trying to claim because my son says that when he's seen that, he said he's showing that Earth and atmosphere move as one. Well, that's no drift, no 15 degrees an hour. Then they seem to forget that that would take away their little Coriolis effect, which requires two reference it, frames. So it, exactly, that's what I told my son. But that's what they're claiming. Earth turns underneath at 15 degrees an hour, giving you drift, 15 degrees of it, and they're all associating Bob with that bullshit. Oh, okay. Dan now is associated with no drift. Someone mentioned pendulums. No, no, I just said it's been a while since we heard that asserted as proof, right? I just wondered why. That's how I detailed this to Bob Nodell on Globebusters. So rather than using the gyro to take it away from something that was obviously personal to him, I, at the advice of QE, I might add, used pendulums instead to make the example more simplistic and not be gyros. But it's the exact same principle. Kudos to QE, because it didn't. Uh, that particular aspect didn't end in a row, and if I'd have used the gyro, it probably would have. Anyway, my example to Bob was to say that their claim with a pendulum is that it swings back and forth as a pendulum does. It only goes in one axis, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. The reason it knocks over the dominoes is because they claim Earth turns underneath at 15 degrees an hour, separate from the back and forth reference frame of the pendulum. So you see an apparent deflection. It looks like the pendulum moves to the side. Pendulums don't do that. That's not what a pendulum does. So they're claiming Earth turns underneath the pendulum at 15 degrees an hour. That's drift. That's what the pendulum's claimed. It's claiming two separate reference frames. The reference yeah. frames ran, Dan says are destroyed. Ruined in his vernacular. Ruined, you say? The reference frames? Oh, I don't need reference frames. Who's, who's claiming reference frames again? Oh, yeah, the Globus claimed two of them for Coriolis effect. And a 15 degrees of deviation, that's drift. So you're showing us no drift. All right. Why? Uh, Daily T's in there, and he was actually talking about a pendulum yesterday. Why don't you let him come in and explain it to us? He can explain how a pendulum drifts as the Earth turns underneath. Then he can tell us why Dan wouldn't be towing the line with that. Even though he believes it. <laughs> yeah, tell us whose reference frame I actually got think I think Nathan explained it perfectly. Yeah, also today uh, Rumpus had, uh, asserted uh, an infinite number of reference frames, right? <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, Danny. Yes, he did. Danny, Danny actually said that Nathan explained it perfectly. So what is the pendulum proving, Danny? I never said it proved anything, but what it shows is that the pendulum is processing. The question is, What's why it? is it processing? Oh, great, but we agree. Everyone agrees that the pendulum is processing. Yes. The question is, why? How do you explain that? You, ex you fundies, globeheads, say it's because Earth turns underneath at 15 degrees an hour. Separate reference frame. The reference frame stand says are ruined because they're your claim, not mine. And him asking me what I would expect to see in terms oh, of drift in his example yeah. is kind of irrelevant because it's not my claim. But nevertheless, the reference frames, the two of them with that pendulum example, is Earth turning underneath at 15 degrees an hour showing drift. The procession 
isn't actually a procession. It's just moving back and forth. But it's claimed Earth turns underneath. So the not actual procession is Earth turning underneath. The, the pendulum's just going back and forth in that claim. But Earth's claimed to turn underneath, giving you drift. The, the drift that the two reference frames give you. Earth turning underneath being one, the pendulum map back and forth being the other. Two reference frames. Those reference frames, Dan says, are ruined. <laughs> oh dear, Dan. Oh dear, oh dear. What's that? What would I expect to say? It's not my claim, Dan. Yeah, yeah, I don't need reference frames. <laughs> Is the, um, could I say the movement or the procession a cause and effect relationship? Yeah, they're claiming it as a causal relationship. They're saying this processes, it's not actual deflection, Earth turning underneath, that's the cause of the claimed not actual deflection of the pendulum. Yes. They're claiming a causal relationship. Exactly. So how do you how do you validate a cause? Uh, you would have to vary Earth spin, right? Earth turn. <laughs> wow, that sounds like a really viable independent variable, doesn't it? Their assumption of Earth turn, you can vary that, can you? Nope. Good uh, luck with that. Maybe this QE guy, I've been hearing a lot about him. Maybe he knows how to do it. No, no, that was what he would say. He would say that you, you have to vary and manipulate Earth turn. Problem with, with well, that Danny, is, right? Well, Danny, Danny is a glober, and he said it is a cause, cause of infectious relationship. Uh, Danny, how would you validate that again, please? It's not a natural phenomena. This, this pendulum's a man-made item. It's not a natural phenomena. It's not a viable DV. Ah, that's true. This can't be validated by science. It's just a bullshit made-up claim. They claim Coriolis effect is applicable on Earth. Well, that's Earth turning underneath with two reference frames, 15 degrees an hour deviation. That is the rhetoric. Yeah, needs two reference frames. Dan says they're ruined. Dan says no drift. He believes in drift. It's better by the day, this. Well, well here, I know, I know Danny's not wanting to engage, but... I know he said that actually it's technically a measurement. No, measurement no, it's not that. I, did, I Can you guys hear me? I've been trying to, I think I'm going through a dead zone. No, we hear you perfectly. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, perfectly. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, it, it just, like, like, like I said, Nathan explained it very well. I think he pretty much nailed it. And the question is, oh. we know that it processes, right? We know that the pendulum does it process. The question is, why does it persist? Yeah, no, um, I have the course. I have the course. The course is man. Hey, we heard it, you last time you said that. Yeah. But, but we know what you assert as a globe head is the cause. You say Earth turns underneath the pendulum, giving you two reference yeah. frames. Well, that would shorten flight times. If Earth turns underneath the pendulum at 15 degrees an hour, because it's in a separate, not attached reference frame, then anything that's not attached is in that reference frame. Anything that leaves the spinning reference frame. Like if you're on a roundabout and you throw a ball off it, well, it's not attached to the roundabout anymore. Well, likewise, anything not attached should spin or seem to spin away from you at 15 degrees an hour as you turn underneath it. That's how you have Coriolis effect. That's what Coriolis effect is. You spinning underneath stuff. So if Earth's got Coriolis effect, we're spinning underneath stuff. And we're not spinning underneath stuff. It would shorten flight times. I see. So, we do know the pendulum processes, but it couldn't be rotation, because if it was rotation, then flight times would be shorter. Precisely. So, with airplanes versus pendulums, is there any differences between those two things? Yes. The claim is that you've got two reference frames. The pendulum is asserting Coriolis deviation. So, I don't care. It's not my claim. You, fundies, globe believers, claim, not me, you, Claim Coriolis deflection. That's you claiming Earth is proved to be spinning because we turn underneath things that aren't attached. That's your claim. And you're asking me what's the difference yes. between a plane and a pendulum. I don't care. It's claimed we've got two reference frames. We haven't. Well, the, the reason I ask is there, there might be something that's significant about an airplane and how it travels versus a pendulum that is swinging back and forth. Yeah, 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 smart ass. Yes, okay. okay, so it's powered flight. No, right? no, 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 no. Hold on, guy. No, no. You're not, you're not getting the subtlety. To have Coriolis effect, 
to observe mm -hmm. Coriolis effect. You are observing something in that effect, and you're observing something not actually doing something, just seeming to do something. Now, it's you observing it. That's the effect. Not what the plane's doing. Well, what the plane... I think we do know that... Oh, sorry, go ahead. It's, it's what's, what you observe the plane seeming to do, but not actually doing. And the only reason it's seeming but not actually doing something is because you are claimed to turn underneath it. So the plane's not going to account for that. It's only an effect that you observe while you turn underneath something. So when we have the Globers tell us, well, the plane would account for it with its engines, or it would account for it with conservation and momentum, well, that's not Coriolis effect. To have Coriolis effect, you need to be spinning underneath stuff. And it's claimed mm -hmm. Earth has that effect. That's your claim debunked by the fact yes. that we're not turning underneath stuff it's total bollocks hmm. well i mean it seems like you guys already know what the explanation is for why the airplane doesn't experience coriolis in the way that a procession of a pendulum it's because the earth uh, is not spinning underneath it <laughs> you guys seem to already understand that you know people will say well the air is you know not necessarily just stationary so when the airplane is flying through the air it's also you know using the air to continue to create thrust and if that air is also rotating with the earth then you wouldn't necessarily see it as a second reference frame that yeah, i heard you even when it's flying yeah yeah i heard that the first time you said it and for the second right. time i'll try and repeat the subtlety that's lost on you you're detailing what the projectile is doing, the plane and the atmosphere and them being as one. Sod all to do with you observing something drift, as is claimed by glow believers. That's your rhetoric. Your rhetoric isn't, they travel together so we don't see drift. That isn't your rhetoric. Your rhetoric is Coriolis effect. Yeah, the... Oh, so when, well, as far as I, that... I'm nearly, I'm nearly I there. I don't really. Uh, it's it's only the third attempt. The it's only the third attempt with you detailing something that's not Coriolis effect as a rebuttal. No, mate. What the plane does is irrelevant, because what you're observing of the plane is the effect, and the plane isn't doing that. So literally, the plane and what it does has absolutely nothing to do with what you observe it seeming to do, but not actually do. So why are you telling me about a plane and what it does? It's only an well, effect. Well, to be honest you, with you, mate, I wasn't. I wasn't talking about the the airplane. You were. You, you were. You were telling me about the plane and how the, the atmosphere and and, and uh, Earth seem to go together, and therefore there isn't a second reference frame. There isn't drift. We're not turning underneath. We wouldn't see the plane drift. No, I'll try again. Well, that's what the explanation is. But uh, again, explanation I, for I'm the not, explanation. I, I got the explanation. That yeah, you yeah, did, yeah, but. yeah, yeah. Explanation for there being no drift, as per your claim that there is drift. So your explanation I for the not... Try, I'll that. try again. I know this triggering for you. You thought you were cocky and you could explain it with the... Maybe there's not a second reference frame. Maybe there isn't any drift as claimed. So like Simon okay. Dan, you're saying there's no drift. Maybe it's one reference frame. Totally pissing in the face of the claim that there's two and that we spin underneath to have this effect where things do things they're not actually doing, but only seem to because we do turn underneath them according to your claim that's supposed to be proving we spin with 15 degrees an hour drift that you're now justifying not even having. So justifying not having the claim that you've got drift then, why would you, like Dan, now be justifying not having drift when that's the thing that's supposed to prove we spin? Why are you now justifying not having drift when that's the thing you, not me, claim proves we spin with your pendulum or your gyro? You were very quick to point out that I concisely described Earth turning underneath it. You said how accurate that was. But now you've gone on to justify why we don't see that effect. Well, that's not proving we have no, I'm, the effect. I'm talking about the pendulum. 
You were talking about the pendulum. You were quick to tell me how accurately I described Earth turning underneath. But your glee concession that I accurately described Earth turning underneath seems to be countered by you now describing the antithesis of that. One reference frame, you say? Um, that's not drift. So I'm asking, why are you justifying the antithesis of your example? You said I got right when I described drift and Earth turning underneath, as per your claim, that we don't see in reality. And us not seeing it seems to lead to you justifying us not having your claim proof of drift. Why are you now fighting against the claim you made with the pendulum? Well, I'm just curious why the pendulum processes. Who gives a fuck? It's not Earth turning underneath. And when we point that out, you say, well, there's a reason it might not be the Earth turning underneath. Yet you need to toe the line like Dan. You're supposed to be claiming Earth turns underneath. It just doesn't. That's why planes aren't drifting. That's why drones don't fly away from you a thousand miles an hour while they hover. Because you turn underneath like with the pendulum. Now, the thing is, I lure you into a false sense of security by accurately describing your claim of drift. Earth turns underneath pendulum. Second reference frame. Yeah, but then we get to the point that I succinctly describe that and you go, oh, well, we don't have that. So you better quickly justify why you don't have your claim proof. Like I'm claiming something, like they're my reference frames now. So you've got to justify why my claim of two reference frames isn't happening. That's your claim that you're now debunking, telling me about the one reference frame with the plane. You realise that you're debunking your own claim then. No drift. I feel like you're arguing with Simon Dan and you're thinking that I'm Simon. No, I'm, I'm talking I haven't to you. Said anything like that. Uh, oh, right. Blame Simon and Dan. This is a clusterfuck. You've got bottom level retards like Rumpus coming in to defend Simon and Dan. You've got mid level retards like Simon and Dan defying the overarching rhetoric that comes down from the high priest of Neil deGrasse Tyson. This guy's picked up Simon and Dan's mistake and is now blaming Simon and Dan for it. You talked about the bloody pendulum. It's now your claim. Yeah, my, my claim is that the pendulum processes... Yeah, and that would mean Earth's turning underneath it. And you're going to ask us, with a burden of proof reversal fallacy, for the third time, why I think your need for this example doesn't do that exact thing with planes. And you're going to justify it with one reference frame, debunking your own claim. Your claim. I'm just, I'm just saying, hey, all, all I'm saying is the pendulum does process and the rate, and here's the key, the rate of precession is a function of the latitude, which is kind of interesting as well. Uh, no, if it processes because of at its latitude, Earth's turning underneath, that's two reference frames. So we've already covered this five times, Mr. Rinse and Repeat Fundamentalist Zealot. We've covered this. Your claim with latitude now thrown in for good measure, still involves Earth turning underneath a pendulum and two reference frames. When I pointed out planes don't do that, you started to justify one reference frame and ask me about whether or not I would see a second reference frame if they were all one. Now, I in no respect make a claim that needs reference frames, but like Dan, you are now defending the lack of drift. No, I don't. I, I'm not making a claim about the drift again. I'm. Oh, really? So it's dependent on latitude. What's dependent on latitude? The amount of fucking drift, retard. No, I don't. I, I'm not making a claim about the drift again. I'm. Oh, really? Hey, all, all I'm saying is the pendulum does process, and the rate. And here's the key: the rate of precession is a function of the latitude. Which the rate of precession is a function of the latitude. Of the yeah, yeah. Latitude and how much fucking drift, you stupid idiot. You don't know your own fucking claim. You stupid idiot! Why are you even talking? <laughs> All right, I'll stop. Yeah, you're Bay Nathan. I'm asking him why he's even talking. He doesn't even understand his own claim. He's just said it's dependent on latitude. The thing that's dependent on latitude is how much drift you have. You stupid idiot! No, the procession, the rate of procession. Of yeah, that's drift. Shut up! Okay. You stupid idiot! Procession. Shut up! Procession is drift. You stupid fucktard! 
You don't know what you're talking about. You're annoying me. Now sit down and shut the fuck up, stupid globe retard. Nathan, it's your I made, show. I made. <laughs> I'll, I'll shut up, that. or I will shut you up. You're thick. I've just torn a strip off of you for your stupidity. You said it's not drift. I'm detailing. After literally only moments earlier saying it's dependent on latitude. Well, the thing that's dependent on latitude, you fucking thick retard, is drift. Do you hear me, you stupid idiot? Are you having a bad Ed, day, shut the fuck up while I tear a strip off one of your stupid retard friends. You! What's his name? The guy being berated for his stupidity who was talking about the drift he claims with a pendulum that he's just said he doesn't claim when he's just mentioned the latitude that affects drift! I'm tearing a strip off you, you retard. What's your name, retard? His name is Daily T. I know what he's called. I want to know his name. Who, me? Daily T? You told me not to talk, though. You said you want me to shut up, so I'll just... Yeah, and you didn't. You, I don't want to get you... You didn't. Now I'm tearing a strip off you. Rate. You continue to talk after I told you to shut up. Now I'm the flat earther who's tearing a strip off a globe-believing thicko. That's what's happening. You thought that it wasn't drift. That's what you said. I told you to shut up. You didn't. You carried on justifying your stupidity. Now you're getting a flat earther telling you off for an audience. Nathan, you're discussing this subject with somebody who thinks that planes fly backwards. Just so you know. Yeah, I should calm down. I should understand that the only people who come here to talk about their globe faith are thickos. Like this man who tells you that he's not Nathan, talking about it. drift after telling you I that the drift's talk. dependent on the latitude. They don't know their own claim. They're stupid. He goes on and on and on about pendulums and how it's dependent on latitude. It's dependent. That's drift. But you don't have any. You're telling me all about how planes are in one reference frame. Thick. Nathan, I made something on this Master B for these trolls. I think you'll like it. Let's have a look. Oh, Danny boy, where is the drift you speak of? <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> Very melodic. It was me. <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful flat side. Thank you very much. <laughs>